Hello guys, this is Andres from Marmoset, here to talk about creating custom shaders for Marmoset SkyShop. SkyShop is now fully integrated with ShaderForge, the node-based shader editor for Unity. This tutorial won't cover the basics of ShaderForge and assume some working knowledge, but it will cover how to get a SkyShop node into your shader graph and how to get started using image-based lighting in your custom shaders. First, import ShaderForge into your project. And once that's in the project, go ahead and find the ShaderForge extension zip file in the Marmoset directory and extract its contents in place. This should create a new folder in the SkyShop directory called Extensions. That folder will contain all the scripts necessary to add a new custom node into ShaderForge. Next, let's open up the ShaderForge window. Let's create a new shader. Call it set demo and we have an empty shader it's already using the sky shop background in the viewport let's create a new color property for diffuse light for diffuse color you'll notice that in the drop down menu for shader nodes there is now a new category for sky shop nodes SkyShop Diffuse and SkyShop Specular. These two nodes add diffuse and specular image-based lighting into your shader. We'll want to hook up the diffuse IBL node to diffuse ambient light. And this is the baseline shader, the simplest shader that's Marmoset SkyShop ready. So if we go to our scene and assign it to our white sphere, we'll find it under the Shader Forge category, Marmoset Demo and press play, we'll see that the shader is already affected by changes to the global sky. It uses sky blending when interpolating between previous and next skies, as well as sky rotation. It is ready for box projection and local skies and triggers and everything else that SkyShop supports. If we go back to the shader, some of the more expensive features such as sky rotation or blending, interpolating between skies as they change, can be disabled per node. So for instance, if we didn't want the diffuse light to blend between two skies, we would uncheck that, recompile our shader, and one now when we go to play, you'll see that the global sky still changes, but it doesn't interpolate anymore. Next, let's make a duplicate of the diffuse color for specular. And hook its color up to the specular output. And this will open up the specular ambient light slot in the output. And we'll want to tie spec IBL to that. And we get environment reflection. If we want to mimic how the Marmoset art pipeline works, we'll also want to use the specular color alpha as the gloss term. We also need to tie that up to the gloss input on the specular IBL node. That enables mipmap gloss in the shader, and we can now select roughness using the alpha of the specular color. If we were using a specular texture instead, we would use the texture alpha similarly for the gloss and the RGB into the specular output. Let's try to mimic the black sphere to the right here. We'll want a black diffuse color and a white specular. We notice that the sphere on the right has a lot of Fresnel. So we'll want to add Fresnel falloff to our shader as well. We, for that, we can create a ShaderForge Fresnel node. Now, Fresnel can be implemented in many different ways. The SkyShop shaders usually use multiplicative Fresnel, or Fresnel that dims the specular response 
at head-on angles in the center of the sphere. So we'll want to multiply the Fresnel term with the specular color. And push the results of that into the specular output. Now you'll notice that the Fresnel is there, but the response curve is different on the marmoset sphere from our new one. That's because Marmoset uses a constant exponent for the Fresnel. So we can either put a constant value of 3 into the exponent slot here, or we can implement it with a simple three-way multiply and use that instead. The Fresnel term in Marmoset shaders is also scaled and biased. So let's create add and a multiply node. Fresnel is first scaled by 0.95 and then we add 0.05 to it. And this um, ensures that even when the Fresnel is totally zero in the center, we'll still get a little bit of environment reflection. We'll use that for our Fresnel curve. And lastly, the Fresnel slider, the Fresnel strength, is an interpolation between our constant Fresnel and no Fresnel. That can simply be implemented with a lerp We will want to lerp between a constant value of 1 when Fresnel is 0 and our total Fresnel term when Fresnel is 1. And we'll create a slider for the user to control. Now we have a Fresnel falloff slider that behaves exactly as the marmoset shader would. The last and somewhat experimental option on both of these nodes is the light map occlusion checkbox. If we take a look at what happens when we apply our shader to a light map surface, you'll notice that first of all the light maps go away until we enable light mapping in the Shader Forge lighting properties. And once the light maps are there, our image-based lighting is adding on top of the light maps and washing out all of our shadows and ambient occlusion. To remedy this, we can first multiply the image-based lighting with the light map before adding it to the scene. So when we enable these two checkboxes and recompile our shader, And you'll now notice that the light map is cutting through the image-based lighting and preserving our nice shadows and ambient occlusion term. This is not 100% accurate as light maps contain both shadow and lighting data. However, it's sometimes preferable to the alternative. It's also nice when you're baking only ambient occlusion into your light maps instead of additive light as well. ShaderForge is an awesome tool for authoring custom shaders and effects, and it nicely complements SkyShop's image-based lighting and rendering as well. Check out the ShaderForge page for more info and tons of learning resources. And for more SkyShop tutorials, subscribe to the Marmoset YouTube channel.